All right, in this video, we are going to talk about something I have been kind of glossing over so far, the sign convention for passive circuit elements like resistors. This is something, again, that we've been kind of ignoring, but we are going to need to start keeping track of as we start analyzing more complex circuits. So what exactly do we mean by that? So far, we have only analyzed very simple circuits where the direction of current flow and application of Ohm's law are fairly straightforward and obvious. So for example, in a circuit like this, with a single battery and a single resistor, we know, at least if you have watched the video about the definition of conventional current, that we say positive current flows out of the positive terminal of the battery around the circuit and back into the negative terminal of the battery and in this case, if the battery has voltage V, we know the voltage drop across the resistor also has to be V, and that Ohm's law applies V equals IR. And again, we haven't really worried about anything like a negative current or the sign of current or the voltage drop across this resistor. We've just kind of been talking about them in terms of the scalar or absolute values. And what we're going to define as the passive sign convention is that, again, even though resistors themselves are not polar, we are going to define that positive current flows into the positive terminal of a resistor and out of the negative terminal of the resistor. And again, resistors themselves are not polar. They don't have a positive end and a negative end. I could take this resistor out of the circuit, physically flip it around, and it would work the same. This is a mathematical convention that I'm defining. So positive current Positive current flows out of the positive terminal of a battery and in to positive terminal of a passive element. Passive meaning resistor, a capacitor, or an inductor. In this case, we're just using resistors as an example, but this also applies to other passive elements like capacitors and inductors. So what does that mean if we just kind of look at a single resistor and the voltage drop and the current across that resistor? So say here I have my resistor, and I'm gonna define this side as the positive side and this side as the negative side. And I'm gonna say the voltage on this side of the resistor is V1, and the voltage on this side of the resistor is V2. I've defined that current flows into the positive terminal, so current flows like this, and the resistor has resistance R. So I know in this case Ohm's law, V equals IR. This voltage drop across the resistor is this quantity V1 minus V2. V1 minus V2 equals IR. So I see that if I have assumed the direction of this current correctly, so current flows from higher voltage to lower voltage, so if V1 is greater than V2, then this quantity will be positive, and therefore my current will be positive because I know resistance is positive. At least in this case, there's no such thing as a negative resistance. So all I'm doing here is just assuming a sign convention that makes Ohm's law consistent. Okay? If I was wrong about this direction, if the voltages are reversed, if V2 is higher than V1, so if V2 is bigger than V1, then V1 minus V2, this is now gonna be negative, which means I'll also get a negative number for my current when I solve that, which simply means that the current is actually flowing the other direction. The current is going that way. So again, this might seem trivial or like it was a waste of time for a circuit like this where it is obvious which direction the current is flowing. But as we analyze more complex circuits, for example, here is something called a bridge configuration where we have a network of resistors like this with one connecting them in the middle here. Without giving you values for those resistors and having you solve the circuit, it's not immediately obvious which way current is flowing through this one. Is it going from left to right or from right to left? You don't know. But when you solve this circuit, which we'll work through examples like this in the future, if I assign a sign convention to this resistor, so I say I'm gonna assume that this is the positive side, so if this is V1 and this is V2, that means I have assumed, okay, V1 is gonna be higher than V2 and that means current is gonna flow from left to right. If I go through this, solving this circuit and I get a negative number for current, 
That simply means that current is flowing the other way and V2 is gonna wind up being higher than V1. So again, this isn't really something you need to worry about for simple circuits like this, but as we get towards analyzing more complex circuits, you need to start being more careful about keeping track of signs and which way current is going and which voltages are higher than others. So we needed to cover this now, even though it doesn't really apply to the circuits we've seen so far, because we're going to need it in future videos.